Hello and welcome back to Ars Nouveau. We are in our starter house at the moment here, but we're going to be, I'm hoping we're going to move things out today. Um, yeah, that's the plan. Uh, we're actually going to start doing something completely different instead, and that is we have a new tool in Ars Nouveau called the Dowsing Rod. And what it does is it shows you what is below you. Specifically, it looks for amethyst geodes, because right now I don't have any amethyst, which means my source of uh, mana gems is, uh, well, kind of lacking. So, instead of searching around here, because I, I don't really care too much about this area, uh, I'm going to use this over at our new area. It's not a new base yet, so I can't call it that. So, the way this works is it basically explores around you and down. Um, as far as around you, it actually doesn't look that far around, it's mostly just down. So, I'm going to see if anything shows up, at least just kind of here. Uh, do I right-click once? Do I right-click multiple times? Not sure. Magic find and scrying. Currently, I don't see anything. So what should be happening is it should kind of light up something below me, maybe? Perhaps. Not sure. So I'm going to walk around a little bit and see if I can find anything. Ooh, hello there. Got some little blue sparklies down here, which looks to be the shape of a geode. Um... I'm just going to dig straight down, because that's always a good idea, right? Um, let's switch you from projectile to touch, please. There we go. And let's see what we can find. Oh, it keeps getting further. I was hoping it would be that size. Maybe. Where are we? We are at Y60. And I'm out of mana, so let's eat ourselves some berry rolls. And keep going. I'm hoping they'll get closer. Maybe. Or I'll fall into lava. We're at Y10. There we go. Perfect. We have ourselves our first geode, and it is within our chunks, which is nice. Um, I might try to explore, see if I can find something that's a little more centered here. Uh, although this should still be loaded, I would think. If I'm around here, I think this will be loaded, so it's probably fine. Um, TPA request from Polar Bear. Let's clear out a little bit of an area first. Thank you, Polar Bear. Um, yeah, they just gave me a whole bunch of amethyst. Cool. Um, well, we will put it all to use anyway, because we're going to need a whole lot of mana gems. Um, let's clear out this. Um, I don't want to currently break much of the amethyst itself. I'm just going to kind of clear an area around it. Um, at some point, uh, I do want to do some proper farming on this, but we actually have another new tool here, new toy, which is the amethyst, uh, what is it called? Amethyst golem. And figure out how to do that. Uh, I think we just do a ritual of awakening, similar to the uh, wield walkers, only you do it around an amethyst geode, and it turns, I think it takes a budding amethyst and turns it into a little golem dude. Hello there, little goblin. Um... I don't actually know where you came from. This area's kind of sealed. But, uh, what do you got? Uh, these guys are pretty cool. They will trade you your raw copper, raw various ores, for double. Um, which means whatever you can get out of fortuning these, you can then double yet again. Um, uh, oh, I was hoping you'd sell me a turtle egg. Ooh, but I can buy sponge from you. And an efficiency six pickaxe, which is pretty cool. Um, I have other things too. Okay, cool. Um, well, Zachris actually has a, uh, a shop set up, not really a shop, more of a uh, trading hall? Not really sure what you'd call it, but uh, he's collecting you guys, so uh, just kind of follow me, please. Alright, let's uh, let's go find Zachris. But actually, while I've got you here, and I've got some iron, um, right, takes a ton of mana. Um, we're going to break up a bunch of this, I got one, two, Three. So, so far I've gotten four out of those three each, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to break all of these, it's going to take a little while, uh, as well as some copper around here too, and trade it with this guy and hopefully get a little bit more. Now apparently the trick with them is that if you name tag them and stick them in a seat, then they will not disappear. Uh, the previous one that I got from the nether before, uh, unfortunately that one did not get name tagged, and so yeah, he despawned. 
Um, I think you're actually done trading iron with me, but you know, I just realized this is granite and a lot of copper. This is a uh, rich vein of copper. That is pretty cool. Um, I don't actually need copper, but perhaps I can build with it then. Um, let's break uh, silk brick. It's an AOE. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep clearing out a little bit more here, um, just to kind of have more room to work with. With the geode, I don't actually need the amethyst anymore because, like I said, I got a bunch from Polar Bear. Um, yeah, I don't actually know what I was going to do with this now. And after a little bit of uh, villager trading here, got a farmer to sell some carrots to, and a librarian. Uh, I didn't actually look for which books he had, I didn't really care. Um, but we finally have a source of name tags. Um, and I believe I have an anvil back at my other base. But I think I've got enough iron here, I can just make one here. Uh, I'll need it eventually anyway. So one, two, three of those. And one, two, three, four. Take that, and you across the top gets us an anvil. So going to just place you here, that works. And you shall be named Bottlin. Cool. Bottlin. So I spend a little bit of time and by a little bit of time, I mean several hours, um, flattening areas. So I've got a couple areas set out here that my plan is kind of flatten it out-ish and see if I can put some different levels of buildings here. And like I said, it's all going to be kind of connected together, but I think it's coming together. So I've got the main area up here. Uh, I haven't finished that side yet. A uh, little platform here, a platform down there. Um, I've got one of a really tall tower right here. Kind of looking out the front as well as another one right here so they're kind of uh, off-centered not quite identical but something like that i don't know um and i have got a longer building here there's a circle there there's a flat area there i've got another flat area back there and i realized excuse me i tried to fly there can work can work okay we'll walk um down here i realized that from the very front it's actually really set far back from the mountain. Uh, the mountain front's kind of like down there actually. So I find out an area way down there and I think, cool. Um, I think what my plan is, is I'll have something here, I'm not sure what, and then pathways that go up into the actual uh, fortress, palace, cala, castle, not really sure what I'll call it, um, but that's kind of the plan. So flatten some areas, push it back, try to make the terrain look a little natural, um, except for, of course, the flat area where the building itself is going to be. You won't actually see the flat part. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the plan. I think I'll have maybe the main entrance way go this way, something like that, and then maybe up into the castle itself through here, something like that. I don't know. Uh, another small flat area here and one right here as well. The thing is, I don't actually know where I'm going to put, well, really anything. Um, my original plan was storage is probably what I should be working on because, yeah, I set up storage at my other base. It's over there. I have a little teleporter back and forth. I was thinking this area, but I realize it's probably not going to be big enough. And also, I kind of want it more centralized. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe have it be down a floor up in this area here. I think that's the plan. And, of course, I have to give a big shout out to Effortless Building here where I can do something like this. You to uh, let's have you be 15 by 15. So over here, over here, come on. You can do 13 by 13 nicely. Come on, I'm trying to show you off. 9 by 9, 11 by 11. I want a 15 by 15. And sometimes the rendering doesn't work. Okay, well, let's try that again. Um, I'm going to break this area back a little bit and maybe that will be helpful. Okay, let's try it again. I want a circle there, back here, 13 by 13, 15 by 15. Right click. And there we have a circle. Yeah, so now we can stick a tower here. Pretty useful.
Well, some good news and bad news. The good news is I'm here. The bad news is I've been sick for a week or so, so I haven't really been able to record. But other good news is I've been busy. Um, I haven't been able to record, but I have been able to do some building. So I've gotten a, a fair bit done. Um, I have kind of an entranceway down here. So this was just cobble before. Some stairs going down to what my plan is for kind of the main entrance to the entire area. Uh, the stairway will eventually go down all the way to the river there, and you'll come up to this. Um, yeah, it, it's a whole lot of work in progress. There's not a single thing that's actually done. Um, but the plan is you'd walk in, and this here would be a rather large tower type thing. Another one over here, pretty much the exact same as that one. Um, over here, this is going to be a little probably a dome on top of there. Uh, and this will be the main arrival point for if you're warping in with the warps system. Uh, working on a warps logo so that people can recognize things. Um, like I said, work in progress everywhere. This is... Um, probably don't recognize it. Uh, there was a carrot farm here. There's carrots here. Here's the bunnies. Yeah, like I said, I've been pretty busy uh, trying to figure things out, where I want things, and just general overall organization. Uh, as well as then, of course, getting lost in chills and bits because, yeah. Uh, let's put all of this in here. I don't need any more of that at the moment. Anyway, what are we working on? So as I mentioned before, I'm kind of going for almost an elven theme here. So I want a lot of life. I want, I'm going to have some, probably some waterfalls and stuff, just, you know, wherever. Um, this room here, I like how it's turning out. Um, the problem is it's a little too solid. Um, it's very like, you know, solid structure here. So I think this is just going to be the main entrance area. And there's honestly not going to be anything in here. It's just going to be wide open, big wall there with the different uh, archwood. And you come through here to get to the actual base itself. So this is going to be the main base. And I want it to be very open. I want to be able to see sky. I want uh, tall pillars that aren't just closed off because I think the like, more open structure will look a lot better. Um, yeah, that's kind of what we're working on here. Uh, I did move all of my storage over here. So no longer have anything over at the base over there. Um, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Uh, this is it's not working. Um, I mean, it works. Yes, I've got you know, everything sorted out here. It's all nice. But it is getting to be where if I go and explore and go mining or anything, because I've got a bunch of these backpacks now, um, if I go mining, it takes so long just to empty out my inventory back into my storage. So I need to do something about that. And I'm not quite sure what. The question of storage has been bothering me for a while, and we have a few options. So various mods that we have in this pack, in this, uh, pack. we have Simple Storage Network, which is pretty straightforward. You basically just connect it to your regular inventories and call it a day. Um, Tom's Simple Storage, it's another kind of similar to Simple Storage Network. Again, you connect things with various cables and such, and you access it through your main terminal. Um, I think they basically both have like the request block, the craft directly from there, storage terminal here. So it kind of turns regular chests into almost an applied energistic system. Um, so that's one option. Um, other options that we have are occultism is in the back, is in the, I keep saying backpack. Occultism is in the pack at occultism. Um, this one here is extremely powerful. Um, it, it can store a ton of stuff. So basically the way it works, if you haven't used it before, uh, you get a storage actuator base here, turn it into a dimensional storage actuator, and place these dimensional storage stabilizers around it. Um, and each of those basically adds to your total storage system. And you can have up to six of the stabilizers around your main thing. Now, when I say it's extremely powerful, I mean it's basically an applied energistic system that is by default wireless and universal. Um, you can get the storage accessor and you can access it from anywhere. Different dimensions, different wherever, million blocks away, it'll work. Uh, as long as your main storage is loaded, of course. Um, along with that, there's a lot of uh, kind of functional things in here. There's ore crushing. In fact, I think the uh, ore crusher is probably the most efficient system we can get for ores. Um, there's also the or did I see that the dimensional mine shaft, which will just generate ores for you. Uh, very useful uh, and very powerful. The problem is, I don't think that there's anything in here for monitoring individual items. There's no like level emitter for hey, I'm running low on comparators, please craft more. 
And that's kind of how I base most of my automation is off of having that type of control. And I don't have it. Um, other options though is, I know if I go through, I think Tom's has a level emitter. And I believe since this can basically sit and attach to any sort of inventory, I could hook it up to Occultism itself and just monitor that way. That's an option. Um, other options are simply wait. Um, spoilers, we are planning a kind of storage type system in uh, Ars Nouveau. We already have the uh, Starbuncles to do the sorting. Um, we're also working on a couple things for being able to request items and monitor items. So work in progress. I have no idea when that'll be around. Maybe it'll be out before I do this video. Probably not. Um, so that's another option. Um, I don't really know what I want to do. Oh, and you may have noticed in the clip behind me, I have a couple spawners here. Uh, we can pick them up with um, carry on mod. Um, just pick things up, move them wherever, plop them down. Really useful. And uh, oh, yeah, those, these are uh, creeper spawners. Yeah, creepers. And naturally, instead of actually solving my problems and trying to figure out what I want to do for uh, storage, uh, I'm just going to build instead. Um, it's a lot more interesting. So, again, effortless building, really handy here. Um, you need to be red and green again, don't you? Okay. Um, I'm trying to figure out patterns. Excuse me, that's not where I wanted you. I want you facing this way. Um, trying to figure out the patterns of where I want everything. I want to kind of just group together the different colors, red and green, then purple and blue over there. Um, yeah, it's coming along. Go up there. Thank you. Um, like I said, this side here is going to be the exact same as over there. Uh, I need to swap out those blocks. Those are the wrong block. I went through like five different iterations of block palette here. But uh, I don't have any actual plans for this area yet. Um, my plan is I'll have some sort of automation kind of just everywhere. Um, so I'll have, I've got a big room here. It's going to have the same spiral staircase going up, second floor, and then the second floor will be more open. Um, I have this area down here, this long area. Originally I was kind of thinking maybe for storage because it's long so I can have like rows of chests. I think instead this is actually going to be for farming things. Um, crops, carrots, wheat, potatoes, that sort of stuff. Uh, I think that's a good idea because like I said, it's a long area, so I can put quite a few different little farming plots. Um, yeah, trying to sort out the whole where is everything going to go in this giant base. I don't know. Um, that's the thing. Effortless building is kind of a cursed mod. Um, you can actually do some cool things that you shouldn't be able to do. For instance, you can take your archwood sapling and you see the uh, where it's kind of showing there. You shouldn't be able to grow this on uh, limestone or regular stone for that matter. But combined with what we know from before, if I, for instance, plant you on the stone, because, you know, that's cursed, uh, I can actually grow you. And if you remember the whole thing where it turns things into dirt, yeah, that still happens. Um, and also, it doesn't happen with just archwood. You can actually do that with uh, regular saplings as well. I don't have any vanilla saplings on me, but you can plant those on the stone as well, grow those, and it turns that into dirt as well. That's why that dirt is sitting over there, uh, as well as that one over there, because I was doing some testing. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it means that you don't have to actually break through the bedrock to begin with. Uh, you just need to plant it down with effortless building, grow your first one, and now you have a hole through bedrock. Yeah, we're going to abuse that. Well, I should be working on storage, but yeah, I'm not. Instead, I have built a small little area over here, and I don't have a proper way to get down there yet. Um, down here is going to be my villager trading hall. So nothing too fancy, uh, just kind of off to the side. I meant to actually replace that dirt first. But uh, yeah, so just going to be a little area here, and then this area on the side is going to be the, uh, we'll call it the recreation area. Yeah, that, that's what it is. Um, need to get a friend for these guys to play with. So for now what I'm doing is I'm just going to be replacing the ground here with the layered calcite. Uh, it's a nice kind of solid clean block which I'm using for most of my floors throughout this whole base. Um, and then the edging I use the limestone for. Uh, I need to go get my... I, I'm, I'm sorely missing my portable stone cutter because that thing is really handy to have with you. Uh, let's turn you off and turn off the replace. 
There we go. And let's go get our stone cutter. I want to have, I think, just limestone around the edges here. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm stalling to not have to do my storage system at the moment. But at the same time, these guys have been just kind of sitting in the middle of a room, um, just in the floor there. So it'll be good to have an actual like building around them, as well as make it a little bit quieter up here. Because, yeah, you guys sitting in a hole, that's not exactly ideal. And as this is 1.18, um, yeah, we have lightning rods. So I don't want these guys to get struck by lightning. They will eventually have a roof, but quite honestly, I can't be bothered to do that yet. Uh, I think I might actually want a second floor on here as well for additional villagers. It kind of depends on how things go. So for now, I don't want them to turn into witches, so I'm just going to put this uh, somewhere. Don't really know where. Um... Right there. Perfect. Now, back to these guys down here. I still don't really know what I want for all the different villagers. Um, I definitely don't want this area loaded because that's going to completely destroy a TBS. Um, but, and I also need to set up an area for them to breed. Which is probably not going to be here because I think they're too close. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with that. I still have a few more villagers up here. I might just kind of move the uh, villager holding area, it's a technical term, uh, down to over there anyway just to kind of keep them out of the way. Um, and that way I can have that room back to actually do some building. So let's just dig ourselves a small little hole over here. Um, three, one, two, three. You know, actually I want this only too deep. Because that's enough. There we go. And probably fine. I am going to put a roof over the top of those. I think I've got things lit up enough that there shouldn't be any problems with zombies. But can never be too careful. So, Elijah back probably actually worry about that for the other villagers in their little trading booths too, now that I think about it. Come here please. And I think that machinist is not an actual machinist, I think he'll stop being that once I move him away from the anvil. I'm actually surprised he was able to reach the anvil now that I think about it. But uh, yeah, I'll just move him over here. And finally it is back to being quiet up here, so that's good. Um, let me grab some more dirt here. I still... I don't know what to do with my storage. Um, it's just a mess. My inventory is a mess, the whole area is a mess. I want to clean it up. I don't know how I want to clean it up, though, is the problem. So we're just not going to do that right now. Uh, for now, I am going to clean up this area, patch up this hole, and remove the dirt, and replace it with some actual flooring. Pick you up. Break that, break that. And you know, let's pick up all these, too. Okay, um, limestone. I think I have some of you on me. And some calcite as well, so... How did I do this? Along like that, and right there. And then this whole area is then the calcite. So I think that will work. And let's just do it in one go. I want a uh, quick replace you two over here. Perfect. Lovely floor. Okay, I'm finally doing it. I'm finally starting to actually figure out my storage situation. Uh, first off, I moved them to be this kind of like staircase pattern here. It's because I'm not entirely sure if I want to use carbuncles or not, or rather starbuncles, they did get renamed. Um, so this would allow them to be able to climb up and get to each of them above. Um, I think they can reach, they can reach at least two high, I know that much. I think they might be able to reach three high. And then there's sort of a weird like magic thingy where they can actually extend their reach. So they might be able to reach up if it's just vertical, but I know they can reach up this way without pausing here and waiting for the AI to take over. So, that's what we're doing. Um, in the meantime, I am going through and cleaning things up here. Um, yes, yeah, so I just added this, I pulled this out here, the bottom one, forward. Added a floor, added a separate wall here, and climbing up things apparently. So, yeah, this is what I got so far. So, the story room is actually a little small to be honest. Um, but I think it'll work. I'm not entirely sure, and I also have this extra room back here. Um, I may end up running simple storage network, because I think that can attach to all of these. Um, so that's kind of the plan, is I'm going to see if I can make that work. And if that will do what I want, because I, I don't want it to be just chaos, and I don't know if I just hook it up, if it'll just be like, oh, here's an available spot, I'm going to dump some cobblestone into this clearly labeled crops chest. I don't know, so things I will have to learn. Um, next up is I punched a wall, a hole through the wall, I can not combine words here. Um, and my plan is, I think I'm just going to link this up to that little platform there that we made. Um, don't have a plan for this yet, 
I might put my like nether portal back here. Maybe, not sure. Um, I might just make this like a little observation deck because it's kind of a cool little view. Not really sure, but that'll be connected there by a pathway. Um, I'm gonna continue moving some items around here because I want to organize this a little bit better. Um, right now it's kind of, they got chests as they came in, so it's not really like organized where the items are. So I'm gonna work on that for a little bit. And you may be wondering, why do I have my item frames on top here? Um, the reason for that is I don't really know if carbuncles will follow the glass item frames. I know that before when I had two item frames on one chest that the starbuncles were having trouble uh, figuring out which one was for sorting. Uh, so I'd have like the allow scroll on the front here and then I had a regular item frame on top here with like a item in it um, to try to like label it for me. And it got confused. I basically just didn't know what to do because it had two things saying what to go in there. Um, I'm hoping that they will ignore the glass item frames and not actually use them for sorting. If not, then I may just end up taking all those items off and just having allow scrolls on the front, or maybe just move these to the front and use simple storage networks for everything. Not too sure. Um, but that's the plan. Uh, we've got, so we do have two things here. We have simple storage network and we have Tom's simple storage mod. They're very similar. Um, and looking at this, I might actually, I was thinking simple storage networks, but I don't see anything here. Network builder, network collector, picker, remote. So you have a remote. That's nice. Um, network exchange interface. Okay. The thing I'm looking for is this level level emitter. Uh, emits redstone signal based on inventory system contents. That's kind of what I am looking for. Um, because that'll allow me to do things like, like I mentioned before, hey, if I'm low on comparators, start crafting more of them, which I don't have any comparators in here. Um, so that's a thing that I may want to go with. I might go with Tom's. I've never used it before. I've never actually used either of these mods before, so we'll see how it works. Um, one thing, advanced wireless terminal. Oh, okay, so I do have wireless with that too. Interesting. Okay, well, I'll play around with that. One of the new additions to Ars Nouveau is the imbuement chamber. So previously this was called the crystallizer and it serves a similar function I'm using over here to get some gems, although currently out of amethyst, um, but it also got new crafting recipes, these various essences. Now one thing about these is it takes a source gem in the middle and it has items on pedestals around it. Each of them still only needs three items, but you know, symmetry, I needed four. Um, but important thing to note is these things on the outside here are not consumed in this process. It only consumes the source gem. So basically the air essence here, or abduration, or in this case I'm needing manipulation essence, um, they basically just cost the source gems, as long as you have the outside stuff. And these essences are used for quite a few different things. Um, for instance, they're used for unlocking a lot of the different glyphs, but more importantly, let me go here, clear you, I want a touch craft please because apparently I don't have uh, crafting tables anywhere in my base. That's kind of a problem. Uh, let's get ourselves a clock here. Um, they're also used for things such as rituals. In this case, a tablet of scrying. I'm gonna be using a scrying ritual to find some more diamonds because it turns out Tom's simple storage uses a whole bunch of diamonds and I'm kind of running low. Um, yeah, so we're gonna put you there, put you there, and a stone button here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna throw, I've got five source gems in the back there. Apparently we are not able to hopper into this. That's gonna be annoying. Can I hopper on top? One, two, three, four, five. No, I cannot. Awesome, cool. Bailey, please fix. Of course, we are running, I think, a couple versions behind here. No recipe found. Pedestals are required must be placed within the one block cube around the chamber. We're learning. I need my pedestal right here and there. Now, I bet you'll hop around, won't you? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, okay. So now it hoppers in. So, like I said, these items on the outside, they're not consumed. Source gem is. So I've got right now hopper, which is currently locked. Once I get an actual essence in there, then I'll unlock one of the slots. Um, the reason why I want this, like I said, the manipulation essence I'm using for the tablet of scrying because it extends the scrying potion effect, I guess, uh, to be 15 minutes. So can get a whole lot out of my diamond ore here because I only have two of them. So I'm hoping to find quite a bit more. 
So I've let this run for a little while here, and we have, looks like, four manipulation essence. Uh, place all of you there. Thank you. Um, I also put together a quick volcanic source link, pedestal next to it to feed it with some blazing archwood. Currently out, but threw a half stack in, got 40% of a jar. Not too bad. And I also left one little space here to put a stone to turn into lava. Uh, just so I have a source of lava, because I don't currently have that. Um, anyway, this... Um, don't want to let you... No, I'm just going to let that work. And we are going to go explore. And I have a little hole over here. It's currently raining. Sorry, I would sleep, but it won't let me. And let's hop down here. Oh, excuse me. Not sure where it just hit me. So we'll fly down here. There we go. And I have a ritual pedestal set up already. And I think all I need to do is need that, need that, need you. Let's read real quick here. If I go to the Ritual tab, Ritual of Scrying. Okay, to complete the ritual, throw any block of your choice before starting. You may also add a Manipulation Essence to increase the duration to 15 minutes. So I'd imagine, right click you, toss you, says Manipulation Essence is consumed, waiting on activation. Okay. Um, Shift right, definitely not shift right click. Right click. Cool. Um, we now have scrying active. And currently I am not seeing, maybe I am seeing. Okay, ah, there we go. Um, awesome, let's go get some diamonds. Um, you are, looks like, right here. Our kids never dig straight down. Alrighty, well, it looks like it worked. We have ourselves some deep slate diamond ore. Um, do I have a fortune break? I don't have a fortune break. Are you... Is that what I'm using? Extract? Extract works. And I can't do that because I have too many dampens on here. Cool. Um... Yeah, I'm just going to do this and get myself a couple stacks of diamond ore. Because looks like it's just about everywhere. Our 15 minutes is up, and we have five and a half stacks of diamonds, which ain't too bad. That was about, I think it was, I want to say one, or I think it was two stacks of diamonds got me five and a half, so not too bad. Um, I also got a whole bunch of random other stuff here, some silver, gold, lapis, redstone, zinc, uranium, and silver. Uh, not a whole lot of iron, uh, but we were kind of too low for iron anyway, but we've got plenty in here, so not to worry about it. But uh, yeah, with that, we can actually start working on that. Um, that said... I'm kind of thinking I might just go with Corporea again. Um, I know I keep trying to do something new each time, but Corporea does kind of lend itself really well to this base. I mean, we don't have Batania yet, but that's, you know, I'm the one who's in charge of that, so I can fix that. Um, but with it, if I have Corporea, I can have everything in the underground here, and then what I can do is basically just have one spark in the middle of each of these rooms, and everything in here would be able to be accessible by it. So I don't really know. Um, yeah, I might toy around with that idea. I know we are kind of thinking of adding Batania anyway, because we don't have it yet. Uh, it didn't exist when we created the pack. When I created it, whatever. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. I'm not entirely sure. Um, like I said, I like to do new things, but at the same time, I don't really know if I want to have like cables everywhere, because I'll have to have like, connectors back behind all this, have it go underground, and anywhere I want to have inputs to it, I'm going to have to run cable to. Uh, I don't know. 
Well, I think we got a lot done today, even if it was all over the map. Got a lot of the base built here. Well, not a lot. There's still a lot more I want to build. We got the Star of Storage system. Got some extra rooms here for some utilities. We got a lot going on. Uh, it's been all over the map because I've been sick a little bit, but uh, I think next episode we'll be able to get on track for building some actual more bases, more base building things here. Uh, some more infrastructure, villagers, automation, that sort of stuff. But I think we're going to call this for an episode here, and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.